Hello everyone and welcome to part two in this series how to draw a tabby cat in coloured pencils. Part one we drew the eyes so if you haven't watched that video already and you want to draw along with me feel free to click the link in the description where I'll share part one so you can go back and do that. Um, but otherwise let's just crack on with part two and see how far we get in the next hour or so. Everything that you need will be listed below, so let's just begin. So I'm going to start on the little brown um, sort of like markings that just above the right eye. And I'm going to use Nougat Polychromos. Uh, and I'm just going to slightly dab away the outline with my kneadable eraser, just so you can slightly see it. and. I'm literally just going to begin to mark in those little brown markings uh, just so that I can still see them and I don't lose them. So just going to do some little hair strokes just on the bottom of the markings just so that I can see where they are when I begin to do all the other colours around them. These sort of like little backward strokes following the direction of the, the fur on the picture. There we go. Just so that I can still see where it is. It doesn't need to be like Anything more than that, just yet. I've got a little, little mark on my paper there, that's mine. Um, just going to do the same again on this one. Sort of like leaving little gaps for the uh, lighter hairs that you can see crossing over these sections, leaving that negative space. helps to add to the realism and it looks more detailed than it really is. Just gonna do a few down here. Like that. Right and now I'm gonna use as a base colour, warm grey one, just because it's a bit more sort of like a neutral warm grey colour around here. So I'm going to use that a bit more lightly just so it's not too strong and start adding that in and blending it into this yellowy orangey colour. A little bit around here. Nice, light, even base coat. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing on this eye, just on the little markings above, above the eye, slightly dab the outline and use nougat again and just mark in where you can see the brown areas. Just here. So 
Sorry if my hand ever gets in the way of what I'm drawing as well, by the way. It's really hard to not cover up what you're doing. <laughs> I'll try my best. Just do this little bit here. I'll just move my hand around. Again, just leaving little, tiny little hairs in between. I just not colouring in some of the, some of the paper. Like that. And then I'll use that warm grey one again to start adding a little base. So I think for these markings I will just add a bit of that warm grey again as a base here and then we can start building up those areas a little bit more. It's, it's quite hard to tell what the base colour is underneath that um, those darker brown sections but because it is so dark it doesn't matter too much and you can see a little bit of warmth in there as well, a, a few yellow hairs, but I can add that in later. The main thing is just that there's a base to apply other colours on top of. So I'm going to use that nougat again and I'm just going to start building up more of these markings. When I'm drawing tabby cats like this that have these typical like brown markings I just like to do a bit of each one at a time and then fill in the hairs around the eye just because it can get confusing I don't like to just focus on one little section. Well here you can see a lot of little hairs crisscrossing over so I'm going to try and keep a few in but don't worry too much if it's not as detailed as the reference. Again you just want to create the illusion of there being loads of detail there as long as you've got some hairs crossing over that look natural that's all that matters. The same thing at the side. You want to make sure your pencil's pretty sharp for this bit. I'm just sort of going in this direction. Then I'm going to use dark sepia and just further darken up those markings. 
Nice sharp pencil again for this bit. Just going to really gradually do little first strokes and add some more depth. And just like leaving tiny little bits where you don't apply the pencil just to give the illusion of some lighter first strokes in between I love drawing these little markings, it's so fun. I find tabby cats easier to draw than white cats, or like black and white cats. They're one of the hardest to draw for me for some reason. Oh, excuse if you can hear it. all the noises from outside, I've got window open. Just like they've done like a little weird like diamond shape there. Just because this first shot's coming up here and up here, so it just helps to create that illusion. Just drawing like little bits in between. That. and then just down there so now it looks like there's two hairs crossing over once you figure out how to do that it helps to make them look so much more realistic out of the way. I'll just do the same thing at this side. Drawing around those tiny little hairs. You'll use this sort of technique a lot when drawing cats because they have so many little little hairs that you can see sort of going in all directions so it's good to learn how to make these little shapes between the hairs. I'm gonna have to put my arm like this, sorry. <laughs> I got that scared me. <laughs> I'm going to close the window. Hopefully that'll be a bit better. I'm 
just going to bring it down a little bit here and I'm going to add some warm grey one again and I'm going to use nougat just to add a couple of those brown hair strokes here I am really close attention to the reference picture so I don't put them in the wrong place spend a lot of time looking at the picture right. I think that's looking good so what I'm going to start doing is just bring that down a little bit so it looks less harsh and a bit more blended in just going to add a few more hair strokes here and a few more here I like to twist my pencil round to get the sharpest point just means you don't have to sharpen it as much and you can just use it for as long as possible while always having a sharp pencil Right, I'm going to start uh, doing a little bit underneath the eye now to just to balance it out because it's going to annoy me if I just do a bit on the top. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to faintly give out that outline and I'm going to add a bit of that warm grey one again. It's quite warm again on the bottom but if you put a, a really light layer down of this can add some of the orange tones on top of it after with a bit of glazing and I'll just add a bit on the side as well keep having to move my iPad I can only see it in certain places because of my big studio lights reflecting in the screen
Right, and I'm going to use some ivory just to join these bits up. So I'm just going to start with nougat again. It's one of the most used pencil, most used pencils in this tutorial, a bit uh, just for mapping in the first strokes. So I'm just going to start adding some first strokes underneath. Some lighter little hairs here, so again, I'm just gonna do that drawing round them technique. Kind of rub that line out. I'm only pressing on really light here to create like a really thin first stroke. I'm always crossing over the hairs as well. Sometimes you get a bit complacent and keep trying to draw them in the same direction. and It's best just to keep your eye on the picture and keep them a bit less uniformed and a bit more natural looking. Just going to use a bit of burnt ochre now and where it's really orangey toned here, I'm just going to start adding some first strokes to blend this bit together. There's a little bit of orange just here as well. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side, using nougat.
follow in that fur direction. I think when you're drawing a pet portrait, the most important things to get right for it to look realistic and natural and all that kind of stuff is the direction of the fur. If you can nail that, then you're, you're halfway there. Um, and the colours. If you can get the right kind of colours, then it's going to look more realistic. But if you can get both of those right together, then that's going to take your pet portraits to like the next level. And of course, you have to get the eyes right. If the eyes aren't right, then it's not gonna. It's gonna look a bit off. And it, I do find it's the first thing that um, people will notice when they see the progress photos of a pet portrait. If you're drawing commissions and stuff, they'll say, "Oh, the eyes are spot on. It looks just like them." It's like the first thing that people will look for. I'm going to add a few strokes here. We'll get onto these bits soon, these little corner bits. Let's add a few. Now, I'm going to use dark sepia again. I really want to do this like darker little mark in here. So I'm just going to draw in between those strokes. And I'm going to start adding some little strokes with dark sepia here just to build up the detail a bit more. And then say we get this side. You can see there's a bit more, a few more darker strokes here where the marking goes down. And then a few more along the bottom. And this bit here. Just gonna darken it up a tiny bit. You can see it's starting to come together a bit now. 
and I like doing it a bit on each eye because then you can see it's like even at both sides. Right, I'm going to finish these little inner corners now because they're, they're annoying me a bit. <laughs> I'll be like half finished. So I'll just rub those lines out a bit and I'm going to use just a bit of warm grey. One grey one here. I might use two in the first one but it don't really matter because I'm going over it with darker colours. And then I'm going to use some ivory just around, around that inner corner. Then I'll use a bit of dark sepia, just I need to frame frame the darker bits of it so I can see what I'm doing. So just where it's a bit darker here. Just gonna add that dark sepia. weird shape but just take your time don't think too literally about trying to get the right shape just follow the shape that you see and it'll come together Right, there's like an orangey bit here. Yeah. I'm just gonna use burnt ochre and just try and bring that out a bit. And then I'm just gonna use a bit of nougat again. And just add a few drops tiny ones here and then I'm going to use burnt ochre again just to add a bit more of the warmth on this bit And here. Like that. Then I'm going to use dark here again, wherever I put that there, and just add some more just 
on these darker bits. Just bring it all together. It's a weird little bit to draw this. My office is getting so hot now that I've closed my window. Let's add a few more there. to be a few more little bits coming from the bottom of the eye. I'm just going to use a nougat as well to add a bit more under the eye. There is like a warmer colour in there that I'm just going to add in now. So I'm going to use raw umber polychromos from the polychromos rather. And this needs a bit more warm brown so I think that will do the job here. That's it. a bit wrong. Just sort of cover it up. <laughs> there we go. I think a little bit into here as well. Really subtly. Just warms it up a bit, and makes it look less flat. If your drawing is looking a bit flat, it's probably because you either need to add some more tonal values, so like some darker bits, or create more of a contrast between the dark and light, or you need to throw another colour in there. So I think that is looking better with the raw umber. like that. I'm just going to add a bit of it in here as well to warm that bit up. And this bit's quite warm actually. I'll just add some more first strokes here. Like that. I think 
We need some more nougat and dark sepia in this bit. So start with nougat. Needs a bit more variation anyway. And a bit of dark sepia. Might just sharpen it. I'll leave um, a link to the pencil sharpener that I use as well. It's really good. Gets like a really, really. Oh, where's the camera lens? Oh, you can't see because of the focus, but it gets a really sharp point, which is just what you need for details. And I'm just going to add a bit more to this little corner as well. Hers sort of like curl round. Gonna add a bit more of this marking in. My arm always makes a really funny noise on the table. And I think I just want to join these two bits up. So bit of ivory, just needs a bit more yellow there. Bit of ivory, bit of warm grey warm. And a bit of Nougat and just gonna extend these bits till they meet. So I come down a bit, drawing in between those lighter hairs. So not necessarily like first strokes, just those weird little shapes between the, the fur. And it comes down all the way to about here. Sort of glazing over them a bit. And I think a bit more dark sepia. Quite sparingly. Just for a bit of extra detail.
it can be a bit confusing at first trying to draw between the hairs and get used to doing that but after a while you get more confident with it and then it looks like you've drawn really detailed but really it's not taking you that long Right, I think I'm just going to do a bit more on this bit here because it is bothering me. So, just going to add a bit more warm grey one. Just really lightly. Just over that section. And a bit more ivory. Just a bit more yellow tone, blend it into it so it's sort of like seamless. And I'm going to use more nougat to sort of add some hairs between. These sections here. I think I've done a bit too much there, so I'm just going to lightly lift some of the colour off with the eraser. That's better. I love these erasers, they're really good. Right, I'm gonna have to open the window. It's getting like an oven in here. Right, that's better. Now I'm just gonna do the exact same thing with nougat in between these sections. And now there's like a pigeon or something. <laughs> Oh well. Hopefully you can't hear it too loud. <laughs> Just gonna do the exact same thing towards the outer part. And here. Then I think I will use a bit of dark sepia just to make it look less flat and like one dimensional, three dimensional, whatever the height is. Just wherever you feel like it needs a bit of extra depth. I try not to go too crazy with the dark sepia because I don't want it to look really dark and 
I like my portraits to look quite light and soft, but sometimes I do go a bit heavy with it. <laughs> Try not to. I'm going to try and darken this bit up a tiny bit. And I'm just going to extend this bit. So I'm going to use ivory. This is quite warm and then warm grey warm and this little bit like that so I'm just going to use a uh, a bit of nougat just to add the mapping mapping the direction of these little hairs and then I'm going to add some more info to it after that Like that. A few more up here. They're all very, very much like crossing over each other here. I'm just trying to do that. Slightly longer strokes. And then I'm going to use some burnt ochre again. Just to make this a bit more orange. Not a lot. And a bit of the raw umber. There's some really subtle warmer bits. Just in that corner. Not a lot at all really. And then I'm going to use dark sepia again just here to add a few more darker hairs. Like 
like this. And a few more. And then I'm just going to add a few, a few hairs there, just to finish off this little bit with nougat. A few more here. Too far off done for this video. Yes, I think I'll leave that there for part two. We've done quite a lot really. Um, so next time for part three, I think we'll carry on drawing these little bits here and see how far we get. So yes, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Please make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, it'll help me out massively and subscribe if you want to see the next part. <laughs>